Hey, yo, what's decent? It's been a while ever since I posted a Wi-Fi match in general in regards to 5th gen. So you guys have been asking for something different. I have with me a 5th gen RU match. I know absolutely nothing about RU. I think of my lifetime of playing Pokemon, I've only had one RU team aside from the one that I'm using right now. So let's see what I can pull off with. My opposition is going to lead up with UC. I'll lead up with Snover. And for those of you who have just been watching me play Pokemon Showdown last night and practicing RU, I just figured out that Hail was a loud so that's why i'm using it i mean it's awesome i love hail and sand more so than i do love the rain and the sun because hail and sand deals damage which allows me to gauge the opposition's leftovers or any kind of other item that they may have i'll know right off the bat whether they're carrying leftovers or not you know but anyway he's gonna go out into garbador after you turning on my snover inflicting some half damage onto it and i'm gonna have to switch out to my steelix just to set up some rocks as well as finish the garbador off provided that he stays in this is not a sturdy Steelix, so I'm not having to worry about having to like rapid spin away entry hazards to keep my sturdy up. This is the sheer force meant to deal with common threats that you will come across in RU. That being steel, bug, water, ghost, rock, and I believe psychic as well. Hence my Steelix is packing crunch, fire fang, earthquake, and I think stealth rocks as well. So after I set up my stealth rocks, I'm able to finish off the Garbodor. Garbodor stays in and sets up spikes greatly actually because I do have my own mascot being droppy on. So if you set up these toxic spikes, it will just dissipate when Whenever I decide to switch in on with a Drapion. So in comes the Rotom, me thinking that it was probably like a Trick Scarf or something like that, maybe packing a Hidden Power Fire. Whatever the case may have been, I decided to stay in anyway and go for the Crunch, but unfortunately that's not the case. He burns me with the will o -Wisp, but look at how much damage that still did onto Rotom. Rotom's smiling all the time, but uh, I don't think Rotom's gonna crack a smile right now. That damage output that Crunch was just able to inflict onto it. Look at that damage, man. So anyway, he's predicting me to go out and use another Crunch, hence his Pain Split, but it actually backs fires as I switch out to my Snover to take that I actually regain damage that was previously inflicted onto me as Rotom ends up with a short and a destroy as he loses hit points and as a dying wish as a last final statement a hero bites the dust finally after a long grueling battle in World War 2 I'm just gonna go and use Ice Shard on the Rotom obviously not enough to finish it off because I'm a Snover not an Obama Snow as of yet but that's great because I'm able to bring in my Entei now I'm thinking about setting up a substitute but I don't want to do that just for him the Shadow Ball. He does have um, Pain Split, so I was kind of hoping that he would do that, but then on the second thought, I was like, you know something? In case it goes for the Shadow Ball, I won't be able to switch into Entei again because the damage I put that he will take from Stealth Fox as well as Spice, he won't be able to survive, so I decided to go for the Lava Plume, finish the Rotom off, in comes a Sock, I'm gonna go into my Steelix just for Death Fodder, me gauging, hoping that it's like choice in some shape or form. If it's, cho I mean, I can't really even tell at this point because he went for the Close Combat if it's choice or not. I was kind of hoping that he will go for the Stone Edge, me living it and then I'll be able to gauge more so the damage output just to see if he was choice or not but for him switching out and deciding to switch out into his Dredagon kind of entails me that he is choice in some shape or form. I still don't know whether he's choice Bandit or choice Scarf. I do have my choice Scarf Drapion actually, which is another counter thing. Let me talk about that a little bit. My Drapion has um, Rock Slide, Night Slash, Fire Fang, and I believe, um, is it Cross Poison or something else with the Sniper ability? Man, that Drapion works wonders, man. Outspeeding Moltres and all that stuff. But anyway, in comes the Dredagon, man. Dredagon I'm gonna get a burn life orb outrage is still doing a whole bunch to me that is way too much but it's probably because I'm timid I'm actually timid with 252 with HP and 252 and no actually 240 in speed and some in defense actually so it's like Man, this is doing more so than the commonly used ball sigil lift that you'll see in RU. But more so, a lot of people like to bring in the Crawdon and um, other stuff that would otherwise outspeed the bald nature sigil lift to get off some super effective damage onto it, as opposed to me having a timid nature and me getting off a burn so I'll be able to sponge the hit. That's the point of me having a timid. Plus, not only that, but if I set up enough calm mines, I'm like a fast, bulky kind of tank. So I'm gonna go for the cycle shift as he brings in the Crawdon. That's exactly what I was waiting for. He's gonna go for the substitute. Yes, you are. Are now a bird crab. Yes, waiter, you can throw me right there. Table number 43 right by the window. And do not forget my marinara sauce when you give me my bird crab, son. Oh, man, I'm tipping you, raider. Yo. Crawdon got burnt, but it's still a threat though, don't get me wrong, because he still has the adaptability, so he can go for the Dragonist, which is what he does, a smart move as opposed to like, inflicting some damage output, which makes his Crawdon faster than my Entei, so now, because of the adaptability and all that other stuff with the stab, he's 
definitely going to be able to finish me off my Entei is not a choice bandage set with extreme speed so it's not like I could finish off the substitute and then bring in my Scarf Drapion to finish off the Crawdon that's not the case so I'm going to have to play switch a rule or rather switch the Pokemon around to I guess dwindle down the damage output that Crawdon can potentially inflict onto my Pokemon until it takes enough damage where Crawdon will be no more inside my stomach son give me that real real quick so I'm going to bring in my Lantern and I'm thinking that I should have actually bought in my Drapion first and then bought in the Lantern I'm thinking that Lantern actually has a water absorb and I'm like no why would I have the water absorb I'm like okay I'm playing in the si I'm playing in the sense in which Lantern has the water absorb as opposed to having the water absorb so I'm thinking like okay if he goes to the waterfall I can absorb it and then you have to do like another crunch or something like that and he won't be able to finish off my lantern but I played that incorrectly actually I should have put in the Drapion first and then switched into lantern and it kept lantern in thinking that he was going to go for a secondary waterfall predicting my Drapion to come back in I should have played it the other way around actually because I can't afford to have Drapion take too much damage because of the entry hazards that are in play I'm going to need that damage for Uxie as well well as the Sark more importantly. It's important to know that Drapion does outspeed the Sark, provided that Sark is potentially a Choice Scarf set, but at the same time, um, the damage output can be a little bit short of satisfying when it comes to Drapion, so I would kind of need my HP more so to survive like an incoming close combat, provided that I would bringing Drapion onto it, but I bring in the Sigilyph on the double down, which is great. I'm gonna go for the Cycle Shift, burn this clown, but not before you inflict some hefty damage But the Stone Edge, man. This clown is in a medieval war right now, throwing Stone Edges at me as if he just came out the Trojan Horse. Sark is not playing no kind of games, man. Sigilyph, he can do it. Willpower, son. Dodge, yes, yeah, son. What are you talking about, son? This is 2013. We don't throw stones no more. We got AK-14s and fucking rocket launchers and guided missiles, man. We got satellite laser beams. Get your stones out of here, man. Stones ain't doing nothing to Sigilyph no more. And the off chance that he happens to connect with the secondary stone that's finishing off Sigilyph, I would have had to rely on Drapion outspeeding, which it does, even though since Drapion is Choice Scarf, and then scoring a crit with the Night Slash, gonna have to lock myself with this Night Slash in order to finish off the Uxie as well. And I've seen Night Slash do some damage, man. I mean, like, coming from, like, a Hitmochan, I think did like, 47% to a Hitmochan at the critical hit. Man, I'm so sorry. Sorry for my tone of voice. I'm ecstatic right now. I definitely would not be standing right here so comfortably if he happened to connect with the secondary stone edge because I have to rely on that crit note to claim good game right there. I can imagine him trying to switch out into Yuxi and then bring it on his soft to go for the close combat to finish off my drop here. None of that even happens because Sigilyph is right here, a monster, son. I claim good game right now. What you doing?